know, many, many years ago when I was a Buddhist monk, I had a guru. And um, the whole guru game isn't for everyone, I, I know that. But for me, it worked really well. It helped me make a, a lot of um, development and understand myself a lot better in uh, a few years. So it was, it was quite a powerful, powerful process for me. And that's despite the fact that I largely got it wrong. I, I intellectually understood that the whole point about a guru is that it's a, a way for us to um, access our inner wisdom. Yeah? It's our way of um, using someone who we respect, like a great teacher or, or a great spiritual figure or something, using that respect to unlock our own potential through our respect for that person. So um, it very often goes horribly wrong because a lot of people don't get that. And I didn't get it either. Like, emotionally, I think I was still in that sort of Santa Claus phase. I was hoping my, my guru would be a spiritual Santa Claus who would just, you know, wave his magic wand and all my problems would disappear and um, I could, um, you know, just carry on and not actually have to change to have a perfect life, which doesn't seem to be the way it works. So I get that now, but when I started out, I just dreamed I'd meet my guru and I thought he'd be an old dude with a beard. And we talk about all the things I'd hoped and all the things I'd feared and steer me through life's complexities and we'd drink tea and taste the life divine and there'd be a tasteful amount of discreet angst and everything would work out fine. Well, gurus don't work like that. Or mine doesn't anyway. He's not overly fond of being direct and often has not a thing to say and half the time I can't even find her. You know, like a radio, you, you, you can't quite tune. And when I do get on his wavelength, all, all he'll say is, oh, you'll be enlightened very soon. He's fond of impersonations. He'll often pop up pretending to be somebody I despise. So I'll be talking to some total dickhead. Damn, it's you again in disguise. Or I'll have some terrible, frivolous, non-spiritual urge, like I want to smoke a great big bag of pot. And instead of telling me I'll go to hell, she just laughs and says, yeah, fuck it, why not? And the times when I am behaving myself and being pious and righteously afraid, instead of quoting scripture, he just rolls his eyes and says, maybe you just need to get laid. I got so fed up, I told my guru, you're an asshole. And she just laughed and agreed. She said, you're so full of shit and you have been for years. An asshole is exactly what you need. Where was my cuddly guru? The one who's going to gently steer me down the path. She says, you be here when she's needed. Right now, you need the guru will kick you up the ass. And so my ass was dutifully kicked. I had a dark week of the soul. And every time I thought things were coming back together, they all spanned right back out of control. And every time I called the guru hotline, all I got was the answering machine. Please follow previous advice. Go inside and love the things you find obscene. And of course, he did eventually reappear. And of course, not in the way I'd think. Instead of William Blake visions of the apocalypse, I got a nice lady at Centrelink. She said, you're doing well, dear. Keep at it. Persistence pays off at the end of the day. And I thought to myself, she's lovely. This is what my guru ought to say. And as I stood in front of the Centrelink elevator, looking at my reflection in the endlessly opening door, my guru looked straight back at me and said, what are you waiting for?